So more photos of the Sony ZV E10 has been dropped pretty much about four days ago. Yeah, I'm pretty late to the party, mainly because I was actually DP on a set, a uh, short film set, which I had zero time to do any sort of YouTube stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, this is going to be really interesting because uh, my friend Gaston Shudders, if you've seen his channel, link will be in the description below, if you do want to check out his stuff, but he's done a brilliant video about this, but I just wanted to throw my two cents into this as well, and I'm pretty damn excited for this camera. Uh, to drop for pretty much a few different reasons. Now, most of you guys know I love shooting on APS-C cameras. The capabilities on these cameras are just incredible. Uh, I love using the FS5, the FS7, which were pretty much the APS-C cinema cameras that Sony had before my beloved FX6 and the FX9. Now, these cameras had extremely great uh, capabilities and even to this day, they still are incredible. The big reason why I love these cameras and uh, why I love APS-C cameras is affordable lenses. It is very affordable for people who can't afford the full frame cameras or the professionals. Uh, <laughs> bigger sensors doesn't necessarily mean better image quality. There are pros and cons to each and uh, I just love APS-C. We have the anamorphic lenses here by Cire. They are incredible that you can chuck on the CVE-10. CVE-10? The ZVE-10, but you can put it on the A6000, you can put it on the A6400. All the APS-C cameras, these anamorphic lenses are such a great budget option. But obviously, you do have these lenses as well. They're manual focus lenses. Uh, what's this one? Pergia, this one is Seven Artisans, uh, I've got TD Artisans, there's TD, TT Artisans uh, out there and they're just incredible. It's so budget and still gets you some pretty decent image performance as well. But we're actually gonna be going through some of the leaked photos today and just explain a few things and just like I said, put my two cents in there as well. But if you do want some specs, I do suggest watch my other videos that I do explain that uh, currently, but here are the specs right now, if you do wanna check them out, and on to the next one. All right, so on the side, we have the USB-C, like I said, the micro HDMI, and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which I was very expecting, but I wasn't expecting a headphone jack. I mean, yeah, I'm surprised. I am very surprised I added this. Plus, the 3.5 millimeter audio jack has its own door, just like the A7S III, which will be out of the way of the swiveling flip screen, which I absolutely love on the A7S III, so this is really good to have. Now, having object tracking and gyro data will be incredible on this little thing. Now, it, uh, it is rumored that it's meant to have those two, and I feel if the camera doesn't have IBIS, then it really should have ND filters, just like the ZV-1. Uh, I haven't read anything saying that it's gonna have ND filters, but the reason to not have IBIS in 2021 is inbuilt ND filters. Like Sony rely on their in-body image stabilization. That's why pretty much none of their lenses have stability, which blows my mind, but you know, it is it is what it is. So what do you guys think? I hope this does have that feature. Is this a camera that you're going to be wanting to invest into the E-mount system? Just remember, if you do invest into the E-mount system, you're gonna to have to buy a whole bunch of lenses. It's not just a regular point and shoot camera where it's got uh, 18 millimeters or 16 millimeters all the way up to 200. You're gonna to have to invest in those lenses specifically. But the pro of that is that you can get really, really good low light performing lenses, shallower depth of field, so much more options. Like this thing is a f 1.2 lens. I think it's a 50. It's a four, it's a 35 f 1.2, which gives you that 50 millimeter full frame equivalent. So it pretty much is a 50. Uh, and this is brilliant for low light performance, portrait stuff. Uh, you can go street photography, whatever. This thing is absolutely fantastic. So E-mount systems, so many different third-party options that you can actually invest in, which is super awesome. Tamron even have the 17 to 70 millimeter f2.8, which is VC as well, vibration control, compensation, whatever they wanna call it. But that is the best lens that you can get. They've even released the 10 to 20, I think, uh, Tamron lens. Uh, I am really excited that Sony are actually putting the time and in investing into the APS-C range. So that's why this camera actually gets me excited. I understand that Sony are recycling the stuff just like the a7 III and the a7C. Essentially, the a7C is just like a recycled a7 III minus the EVF, put the flip screen on, uh, 
put the um, object tracking and all those kind of things in there. This one's pretty much the A6600, <laughs> put flip screen on, minus the EVF, it's pretty much the same, but uh, it is cheaper. That is what I love about this, is the price. This is going to be driving the prices of other cameras down, while this camera is obviously actually really cheap. So us content creators are extremely lucky to have this, and I think it's just gonna be great for what Sony are actually doing. At the first, I was kind of like, what are Sony doing? Why are they recycling a whole bunch of stuff? And it is starting to make sense of what they're actually going to be doing. What are you guys' thoughts? I'd really like to know anyway. Comment below, but let's get into these photos. Now, as you can see on the top as well, you have the hot shoe on the left-hand side, and you've got the audio thing in the middle, which you can actually put the dead cat on top, just like the ZV-1. So that'll give you a really nice audio if you do end up vlogging or you don't want to be doing uh, putting a shotgun mic on top. Uh, you've also got the Zoom Rocker, which like I said in the last video, is uh, the Zoom Rocker is absolutely incredible. If you pair it with the kit lens, the 1650 kit lens, it's a power zoom. You can zoom in and out nice and smooth, which is great. Uh, it also works with the 18 to 105 f4 lens. That's a power zoom lens, works well with that. But if you don't have a zoom lens, uh, it actually taps into your clear image zoom. So it gives you that extra 1.5 times reach, which is fabulous. It's a 6K sensor. Well, it should be the same 6K sensor, down sample to 4K. So you're actually gonna get really clean images when you actually do that clear image zoom. So that is a fabulous feature to actually have in that. Now, also on the top, you do have your on and on switch. Rather than being on the front, this time it is just a little switch, just like the FX6, just like my FX6. FX9, but uh, that is a really good feature to have. Oh. And one of the clear features is these little dongly things. We uh, the, the camera strap is actually built differently, just like the FX3. It's this nice little aluminium sort of frame. Absolutely fantastic design. I don't know why they haven't done that previously, but it's, a, it's such a better design. It looks more solid. And I even, in this short film, I did like a snorri cam thing where it's rigged up in front of the person. The person's running around where you see his face. But we heard this. I used the A7 III on that, and uh, all we had to do was gaff that down. No noises. It did mess up the lav mic audio, but once that was uh, gaff taped down, Perfectly fine, works very well. But uh, other than that, seems to have that same battery at the bottom as well. We, like I said in my last video, if you compare the size, it does seem to, to have that W50 battery, which like I said, you're gonna need about four or five of these if you are going to be shooting all day. Do recommend Sony ones, they last longer, they charge uh, better, uh, they're just better. Uh, you, this is a lay fire. These aren't very trustworthy. They don't last very long. But uh, if you do want to go third party option, you pick these up for like 20, 30 bucks. It's crazy, crazy cheap. So that is perfectly fine anyway. But I've got about five or six of them because I've got so many APS-C cameras. But yeah, what are you guys' thoughts? Definitely comment below. Really like to know. Now also the back part as well, seems to be pretty much the same as the A6000 series. Uh, the buttons, pretty much a very similar layout. Uh, I really did hope that they would switch it over just like the FX6, so they would sort of optimize it for video features uh, because this does seem to be more optimized for video content creators, which will still take 24 megapixel stills Absolutely fantastic. I've used my A6400 on weddings side by side with my A7 III and no one bats an eye. It just gives you that extra 1.5 reach. Still nice clean images as well. And like I said, in terms of video, I would really, really would like to optimize some of the buttons on the back with instead of your ISO on this, you know, D-pad thing, it would be at the top um, and, you know, aperture in a different spot. It's just a little bit awkward on these ones, but yeah, that's all right. I am very excited and happy that they've taken out the EVF, made it just a little bit more ergonomic into nowadays. Not many people use EVF. I understand if you are in really bright situations, EVF works, but when you start using cameras without EVFs, you get used to it and you don't really go back. But yeah, I'm super excited. What do you guys think? This is a quick video of the Sony ZV-E10. It is one camera that uh, I really think will do well. And thanks Sony for bringing this out. A very more, very more? 
a more budget version of the A6600, which we are hoping is going to make room for the A6900 or A7000, the high-end APS-C camera, which I am really, really, really hoping for, which will hopefully have 10 bit, but uh, yeah. Other than that guys, subscribe to my channel if you already haven't, like this video if you actually did like it, that would be absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.